Hey, hi, hello, it's me, it's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going into the Tomodachi Life Iceberg Theory. A lot of you have requested me to make this video and I'm super excited because this has taken me so long to make and I hope that it lives up to your expectations. We're going to dig way too deep into every bit of this game and it may seem weird at times for the super wholesome game, but uh, trust me, it gets really good. <laughs> This theory was posted by a redditor by the name of Fifu2. I hope that I am pronouncing that right. If not, I will still be linking their page down below so you can check out this uh, theory on your own. I apologize if everything isn't correct, but I did want to simplify the Tomodachi Life Iceberg. It is a huge deep dive into the game and it's super interesting. So an iceberg theory or iceberg chart is usually an image of an iceberg captioned humorously or seriously sometimes so that at the tip of the iceberg, the sum of the game and the knowledge that most people um, know about the game is at the top, while the larger submerged part of the iceberg is the sum of all of the knowledge of a particular topic. So all of the juicy stuff that you're not going to know by first, first playing this game or first glance of the game or whatever theory you're speaking of. Tomodachi Life is a simulation game developed by Nintendo. In this game you can turn your friends, family, and even celebrities into me's. A sort of mini sim, like as in The Sims. <laughs> You can customize everything about your me, recreate a person in its many form. They can sing, eat, fall in love, break up, go shopping, play games, and live their life in a similar fashion to our own. This game was released in 2014 and even though it's over six years old, it still generates a lot of attention to this day. When you look at the fan created Tomodachi Life Iceberg, I'll link it down below in the description like I said earlier, you will see at the very top of the iceberg things that we know about the game. The text to speech voices, very correct, sometimes pronounced things hilariously wrong. Um, they are very humorous in their own right and can lead to some uh, really weird things happening, that's for sure. So quirky questions is where you can ask your me's literally any question and there are really no limits to this with the way that the prompts are set up in the game. So you can ask some pretty risque questions or some really fun, innocent questions. The 16 different personality types that completely mold your me. Um, there are a ton of different personality types in this game. There are different ways that you can fill out the check boxes whenever you're creating your me to make your me's personality a little bit more different than the next me that is in that same personality range. The relationship mechanics, which are super realistic, your character can fall in and out of love, marry and divorce, have a family, etc. Or if we're talking about the actual chart of relationships that you have with other me's, it keeps track of every everyone you're friends with, who you're getting along with, who you can't stand. So pretty much literally keeping track of uh, everybody in your life or your me's life. Going down a little bit into the iceberg, we have the profanity filter, which sometimes doesn't work. You can find ways around this filter to make your me say some really crazy things. And some words are not censored at all or you can find a way around the sensor. <laughs> Import wear is really weird because it was relevant in the game whenever it was first released. Now it's pretty much useless. Import wear is a location in Tomodachi Life where you can purchase clothing from Street Pass or Spot Pass, which is a feature on the 3DS when you took your 3DS out in public and passed by another person with their console. You could get different items sent through Street Pass to each game, but nobody really plays the 3DS anymore, so these features don't really work the way that they were were intended. Babies in Tomodachi life are super odd. <laughs> you try to help your me out while the baby is crying, trying to calm them down, but for some reason you can shake the baby and make it really miserable. Um, you almost become a babysitter and they are creepy in their own right. <laughs> Babies have their own special 
little quirks about them and you can go and visit your knees and they're taking care of your child and at the end of them being a baby or a toddler you get this awesome photo book that shows the process of them growing up. The dreams in Tomodachi life are very intense sometimes. You encounter yourself in a mirror except it's not you. You fall from the sky onto a cheeseburger, you get dipped in paint. <laughs> very much nightmare material. And then we have things like marriages and me homes and islander mini games, all very innocent and wholesome for the most part. And one mini game you can help your me sneeze. Hmm, ever done that one in real life before? <laughs> the marriages are very adorable. You can tap buttons to help your me's propose, and if done right, they will get married and receive a me home. They still keep their apartment, but have a separate home to do me marriage stuff in, like cooking and eating and showering and brushing their teeth even. Oh, and of course, watching TV and <clears throat> having babies. <laughs> Next is the trash food, like the molded bread or the spoiled milk green juice, even the habanero peppers, or the escargot, and so many more. It's very disturbing. <laughs> it's very disturbing and disgusting. The items that you can feed your me's, they will eat them. They won't turn them down unless they're really full. Kind of like a torture session. Like I've mentioned in my Tomodachi Life conspiracy theory video. The Europe and Japan version of Tomodachi Life are very different. In the Europe version, the voices have an accent. In the Japan version, you can take a bath with another me. Oh, and the Mies have very cute anime blush in the Japanese version. These versions aren't necessarily talked about as much, but they do exist. And I know a ton of people that do have the Europe version. I don't know as many people that have the Japanese version of Tomodachi Life, but they are both very interesting and different in their own rights. Now the deeper we go, the darker it gets. Let's talk about what's underneath the surface of Tomodachi Life. Things that you'd have to play the game to know. These are more intense. <laughs> During the summertime, your Mies can participate in a barbecue event. Your Mies can make food and chat to each other. But if you leave your game alone for long enough, your Mies will get covered in ash. I've actually made a video about this and it literally looks like your Mies are burnt alive or charred. It's really spooky, honestly, and a very odd feature to add into the game. So to stop this from happening, though, you have to um, blow away the smoke whenever a cue is given, but you can leave your me be and they will turn pitch black. <laughs> the bird is one of the things I bring up in my gameplays a lot. It's really loud and a lot of people compare it to screaming or just uncomfortable noises, uh, even crying. It's actually a bird that circles around the island from time to time, but it's just one singular bird. In Tomodachi Collection, there are more than one bird, but for some reason in Tomodachi life, only one made it through. The gay marriage controversy was and still is huge when this game was first released. You can't marry someone of the same sex unless you do certain tricks in your game to make this happen. Nintendo did come out with an apology not too long after the game release in America, and they promised to be more inclusive in the future. They never did um, do an update to make that happen, but they did in fact do just that with their newer releases of Mii games such as Miitopia. But I am glad that Nintendo really decided to be more inclusive in the Miitopia games and hopefully if there is a new Tomodachi Life game in the future, they will do the same thing. There is a whole article of them apologizing and promising to do better. I will try to find that and link that down below in this uh, description. The golden interior is literally the most expensive item in all of Tomodachi Life. You have to have at least $20,000 to unlock this item in the interior shop and that is how much that it costs as well. If you've played this game, you know how hard it is to earn money. So the only way that I was able to get this is because I hack my game, but um, that would be almost impossible to get on a normal save file. The description states, no wonder why this room is so expensive. It's a robber's dream come true. A robber's dream, eh? <laughs> that's, that's pretty weird. <laughs> That's a weird way to describe the golden room. The worst or best ever reactions are pretty intense. You have one where me is literally jumping around in, in excitement and another one where your character will literally melt. And 
and these extreme reactions are based solely on food. So whenever you feed your me your their favorite food, they will be really excited and almost crazy. They got the crazy eyes. Or whenever you feed them their least favorite food, they turn into sludge and they turn gray and they melt into the ground. It's really weird. <laughs> the treasure food or special foods are unlocked by Street Pass. You can't get those certain foods unless you Street Pass somebody with your Nintendo 3DS. I have a lot of these because I hacked my game, like I said uh, just a second ago, but if you don't hack, these are pretty impossible to come by. And one cool thing about these is your Mii will always enjoy these food items. They will never have a bad reaction to these. So if your Mii is upset or if they're sad for some reason, you can give your me a special food and it will almost instantly cheer them up, which is really neat, but they're really, really hard to come by now. Tomodachi Collection is the first ever game in this entire series. It was only released in Japan for the Nintendo DS. There are a lot of features in this game that were not brought to Tomodachi Life, but if you are lucky, you can find gameplays or emulators to see this game firsthand. It's pretty amazing and a rare game indeed. I'll link my Tomodachi Collection playlist down below, but there are things in this game such as whenever you get married or the blushing scene, there are things like a job title that you can give your Mies. Awesome things about this game that just weren't localized or even brought to Tomodachi Life at all, which is kind of sad, but uh, it's very interesting nonetheless. And it was made only for the Nintendo DS. Something interesting about this is that we actually reside on two islands in Tomodachi Life. At first glance, it only looks like one island, but look a little closer, it's actually two. The campground is another rare add-on in the game now. This is where other islanders um, are sent when somebody sends their me babies on adventures. If you street pass someone with a child sent out, they will reside in your campsite. I've only seen this once in my entire time playing this game, and it was because I had two Nintendo DS's and I had Street Pass on, and I was able to Street Pass my Mii's um, child. It was really weird. I was able to catch it all on camera, and it is pretty interesting. I will definitely link that video down below as well, so you can check that one out. And it is just really cool because they will take a bath and eat food, and they're really excited to be back home on their home island. And that's that's whenever they make it back around to you. I'm not sure what it looks like from the other end though. That's very interesting. <laughs> Mr. Tomo is the shopkeeper. In different regions, he has different appearances. In the Japan version, he has a black bag over his head. North America, he has a wooden block over his head. In Europe, he has a robot head. And in Korea, he is wearing a racing helmet. In every version, though, he never shows his face. Tomodachi Quest is an 8-bit style RPG game available at the amusement park. You fight different bosses, such as giant food items. There are food classes that your Mies will appear as, so a fighter, a swordsman, a mage, and a cleric. And you can play this once a day for 25 cents. It definitely has Miitopia vibes if you ask me. Now we're gonna go a little bit deeper. These are things that you might not know about Tomodachi Life even as a casual player. Instead of the different special foods that you can get in different regions of the game, I thought I'd talk about how in the Japanese version of the game your Mies, when your Mies are married, you can visit their homes and you can literally see them bathing together. This is something that you can kind of see in the American versions, um, your Mies will shower together, but like straight up in the Japan versions, they will literally just be in the bath together. It's something not added in other regions and is actually really rare to see. Uh, North America versions, like I was saying, you can see them shower together and you can see them brushing their teeth. It's just interesting to see Mies live out normal activities like we do as humans. In the Japan version of Tamanachi Life, there is an additional song option that your Mies can afford called Enka. I really hope that I am saying that correctly. It is a popular Japanese music genre considered to resemble traditional Japanese music. It's very interesting. I have seen a little clip of it and it is really, really cool. So there is an extra song release in the Japanese version. The observation tower or the rooftop is a bit different in the Japanese version as well. The rooftop area was once accessible by the player in the Japanese version aside from the Mi apartments. It was replaced by the observation tower building in the international versions. 
and they serve as the same function as one another but it is interesting that it was accessible once upon a time. The Weird Dreams trailer for Tomodachi Life was one of the rarest trailers for the game. At the time of researching this video, um, that was the first and only time I had seen that trailer for this game, literally at all. It was weird seeing that so many years later. <laughs> but um, nothing too odd, but very definitely very rare. The edit wake up exploit is a lot like it sounds. You can't wake a sleeping me. Once they're asleep or dreaming, they are asleep until they decide to wake up. But you can use a game exploit to force them to awaken. All you have to do is go to the edit me option, change something small about their appearance and save, and then they will be awake when you see them next. I think this is very, very interesting, especially if you want to uh, play with your me or give them something and you want to force them awake if they're asleep at the time. I will definitely have to try this one out for sure. <laughs> Hidden locations are certain locations that only appear in special events, such as a proposal. Otherwise, the said locations are completely inaccessible. These imply that the island's map screen may just be a simple view. And the island itself is actually much larger and immersive. So places like the classroom, hotel, the kitchen, the office, the fancy restaurant, and so many more. All of these locations are hidden on the map, but are there. They do exist whenever you are in certain cutscenes or parts of the game. If you listen closely while in the cafe, you can hear that this location reuses Tomodachi Collection music. A huge nod to the original game, which is something I actually did not know but is very interesting to actually learn. Now as we go a little bit deeper, we get into the lore of the game that the average person might not know or looked over in the game. This is where it starts to get really interesting. As some of you may have noticed, there is a brand in Tomodachi Life called Redford. It's basically a generic company that supplies whatever the plot demands, but upon further research, Redmond, where the game was localized by Nintendo of America, plus Frankfurt, where the game was localized by Nintendo of Europe, so pretty much the streets Frankfurt and Redmond created the brand Redford. So it's interesting to see that the street names created the brand name for the Redford uh, brand in Tomodachi Life. The Korean version of Tomodachi Life is pretty hard to find information on. During my research, I wasn't able to find a lot about this game. Unfortunately, the only things that I was able to find were the regional differences, such as Mr. Tomo. Um, I also, though this is very interesting, I found a very, very rare trailer, and it was so intriguing to watch. I'll link it down below but so you can like watch the entire thing. But it is a Korean trailer for Tomodachi Life and I had never seen that before doing this uh, video, the research for this video. It was really awesome to see. If you've heard anything about the Korean version of Tomodachi Life, definitely uh, leave a comment down below and let us know because I'm very curious. <laughs> the courtyard next to the observation tower is a pretty hard thing to get into. This is where your Mies will skateboard and play basketball and whatnot. The only time I've seen my Mies there is right after I give them a specific item, like literally no other time, by their own free will, which makes you wonder why it is that they're not there often. I don't know if in maybe your game or, or somebody else's game, their Mies go to the, um, courtyard more willingly, but mine definitely. They do not. <laughs> the restaurant in the observation tower is something that you can only get to when a me is proposing to another me. It's extremely fancy and beautiful. A rare experience for sure. When your Mies have a baby, you can take it to the photo studio and there will be exclusive toddler clothes that will only be available while your Mies is a baby. For example, this really cute duck or chick costume and they have other different costumes that only the baby can wear for a very limited amount of time and you can only access those through the photo studio. The islands are larger than the map implies, which makes a lot of sense because because the Mi apartment building is huge by itself. Even looking at the beach, you can see it's very extensive and unravels further than it does on the map. It's so large that the stone lamp leading down to it, um, seen on the map, is not visible whenever you're at the beach. 
There's also a helicopter at the beach as well, which should be a good size reference into the island. So pretty much this place is huge and it's a lot bigger than we are led to believe, especially whenever you think about all of the hidden locations, restaurant and stuff like that. All of that is hidden from our view and the train station as well. There are region exclusive vacation locations. In the Japanese version, a me can travel to Egypt, Guam, Italy, and when given a travel ticket. All of these locations were removed in the North American versions, um, except for Guam, which is replaced by Tahiti. Africa is absent in the Japanese version, and the Saharan sand is instead given as a souvenir from Egypt. In the Japanese and Europe versions, the souvenir from Germany is a piece of the Berlin Wall. This is changed in the North American version to be a nutcracker. In the Japanese version, instead of Mies visiting the USA, they go to New York. Australia is also absent in the Japanese versions. The music during certain vacation locations are different depending on the region. For example, the music for Germany and North America is used for Switzerland and Japan, and vacations are referred to as holidays in the Europe and UK versions. Now getting a little deeper, we go into things about the game that are more odd. Almost conspiracy theories in a way, but do exist in the game overall. The train station is another hidden location on the island unless you are on a date. This also goes along with the theory that the island is a lot bigger than it appears. Who runs the train station? Nobody knows. You'll reach the finish line soon enough. Now this one, I couldn't find much information on other than the actual Reddit page, someone described it as a random phrase that the Islander will tell you whenever you interact with them. It is basically saying not to rush life because you'll reach the finish line, which is usually really creepy for the game. While playing Tomodachi Quest, you can come face to face with the historical bust. Nobody knows who this is supposed to be, but there's also a mean news about the historical bust, claiming that it has power and is able to cure illness and great things to happen. Very unnerving for this game specifically because it's pretty much claiming that this historical bust has magical powers. <laughs> Luhu Island is the island where various Wii and Nintendo 3DS series games take place and is a large tropical island. It is the only settlement outside of the Mii Plaza controlled by and completely populated by the Mii's. It is tropical in climate and has a variety of wildlife. It is said that there is a mention of Wuhu Island in Tamadachi Life. Me news is pretty much fake news. The stories are crazy, almost very obviously fake. It reminds me of those news magazines that would claim things like Elvis is still alive or the celebrity adopted an alien baby. So whenever you really think about me news just being fake news, it kind of throws a lot of theories out the window. The compatibility tester character models are pretty odd. When you look closely, they are actually human, not me's. This also takes place in Tomodachi Collection, but a bit more intense during the wedding on Tomodachi Collection. Your me's have human bodies for some reason. <laughs> now we are getting into the most intense levels of the iceberg. These are some of the deepest or most odd things people have found out about Tomodachi life and it leads to believe that this game goes a lot deeper than most believe. So where does the Food Mart's food come from? The Food Mart is a building where you can buy food for your Mies. Every day five random items are featured and available in the today's item section. But where does the food actually come from? It's made unclear how the food gets to the island, but with how big the island really is, food could come from an outsourced area not shown. It could even come in through the airplane or the helicopter that is at the edge of the map, or it could come through the train station. Both are very plausible explanations. Removing babies from the game. <laughs> Removing a baby or a child in Tomodachi life is not an easy task. It's said that even if you try to delete both of the parents, the game will refuse and force you to have those Mies until the child is old enough to be sent off or become an islander. In a way, you're forced to have the child. I wasn't able to find information on how to successfully remove a baby from your island before they grow up, but you can definitely try to remove the parent Mies, but it's said that the game will stop you in that process. 
So that's a little creepy that you are being forced to have the me baby. <laughs> the glitched me voices are something we have experienced a lot on this channel. The text-to-speech generator sometimes does not work the best and you can make words sound even more odd the more that you tamper with the spelling and that is something that I have a lot of fun doing because you can actually make your you can make your me say a lot of blocked words by doing that. And at the end of whenever they're singing, sometimes their voices will glitch and almost screech. It's very, very weird, but if you've watched my videos, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. The save data deletion pleading. Wow, this one is definitely something else. When you decide to delete your save file, your me will appear begging you not to delete your island. It is very creepy in its own right. Instead of the game deleting your me saying goodbye or just leaving it as that, your me will literally run towards the screen pleading you not to delete them, causing your me's existence to end is something your own character is even afraid of. Metopia is thought to be based off of Tomodachi Quest. Honestly, this isn't too odd. It's very believable. Tomodachi Quest is a mini game held at the amusement park, and it's an RPG paced turn game, which we talked about this earlier. Um, you fight different items and food, and at the end of the battles, whatever item you are fighting, you receive as a gift. Metopia and Tomodachi Quest are both RPG games. Very cool to see a nod to this in Tomodachi Life, even though Metopia wasn't released until 2016. Now, the subterranean Subterranean island bunkers is something I really couldn't figure out. Um, the only thing that I could put to this is that they are talking about the secret base under the me apartments. This is talked about during the conversation at the cafe and they talk about building a secret base to hoard certain foods. The, um, that way they will never run out of that item or that food ever again. Almost apocalyptic sounding, but these subterranean island bunkers? That's the only thing that I could correlate with that. If you know what that means specifically, definitely leave it in a comment below. But I believe that it is talking about the secret base under the me apartments. Next to last, at the bottom of the Tomodachi Life Iceberg, we have more theories on the island itself. Now let's dig into these and discuss each and every one. Islanders will finally age when the save file turns 50 years old. Now whenever I first read this, my instinct was to time travel 50 years to see what would happen. But what if your game actually has to be 50 years old, as a Nintendo coded a way to know that um, what the actual date was. I haven't tested this theory out to find out if it is real, but it is extremely interesting. This definitely reminds me of the aging dream that exists, and your me is shows up and they are older and they're reminiscing about the times whenever you would play the game and you're both young and stuff. It's it's really it's creepy. <laughs> Vacations are just islanders posing in the photo studio. This makes so much sense to be honest. You don't get to see them out interacting with their environment. This almost reminds me of the movie Wally and how on the ship the captain could change the time and the day with just a switch, making the people aboard the aircraft believe that they were actually seeing nature in its purest form when actually it was just a simple illuminated screen. Me's are not human. <laughs> oh boy. If you watched my conspiracy theories on Tomodachi Life, then you know that this is one of the biggest theories that I have about me's. The fact that whenever you're in the love tester, you receive a human body and a me head proves this even more that the me's are inhuman. But they are in fact a species of humanoid creatures called me's. It's really weird because it also shows that in Tomodachi Collection, whenever you're married, it gives you a human body, but a me head. So you're not exactly human, and the game almost proves this without actually saying so. Interiors are advanced hologram tech. <laughs> This goes along with the photo studio vacations, the things printed on the walls in their rooms they're unable to interact with, but their door and separate items gifted to them, they can interact with those things. So whenever you see your me in an interior that appears to be a galaxy or a private getaway, maybe it's all just a hologram. This reminds me of a Disney movie called uh, Smart House 
where the house could create a hologram on the walls and in your room you would see various uh, different places such as a basketball game or a concert or just um, be out in nature. It's both very similar. The islanders are isolated. The Mies on the island seem to be very alone even when they're not, especially whenever you have a me that hasn't made friends. They have minimal contact with other Mies and no contact with anyone outside of the island. They have themselves and that's pretty much it. Nobody comes in and nobody goes out, unless you have Spot Pass activated. And even then, they're sent somewhere into the void, especially nowadays, and sent to a campsite where the other Mies don't even see them whenever they're on a different island. They're far away from any other living creature that exists in the Tomodachi universe or even the timeline. So they are in a way very isolated from the entire world. Redford is a monolithic corporation. <laughs> So first I had, to, I had to look it up because by the time I was done researching all of this, my brain was like, what is that? So Monolithic Corporation is a large, um, undiverse organization. I can't even speak. So think any large brand that would exist in our world. For example, like Apple or Sony. Redford is Tomodachi's life. Tomodachi's life? <laughs> Redford is Tomodachi Life's big company. It pretty much runs a lot of the other brands in the Tomodachi Life world as well. So, it's a big one. <laughs> now we are at the very bottom of the iceberg and I hope that you have enjoyed this so far. These are things that nobody would ever know about the game at first glance or even a bunch of times playing this game. Tomodachi Life is very wholesome on the surface. So picking apart these things um, that aren't so wholesome, most people are not willing to do and it's a lot of work. So <laughs> let's just get into it. Do not have your lookalike look like you. I'm guilty of this. My me looks exactly like me, but it said never to do this. It said that if you do, a lot of bad things could happen. A lot of creepypastas and theories have been born by this idea. When you've made your lookalike look exactly like you, you've created an alternate reality of yourself. Just think about that. <laughs> the shopkeeper's face. Earlier on I spoke about the shopkeeper Mr. Tomo and how he hides his face with a few different items, a bag, block, a helmet, or a robot head. Nobody knows what Mr. Tomo's face actually looks like. When he's not available to work, one of the other enemies will take his place for the time being. What is Mr. Tomo hiding underneath those uh, masks exactly? Literally nobody knows what he looks like. You are stalking the islanders. This goes along with my godlike theory of this game. In a way, you're playing god to a bunch of me's. You decided what they eat, how they were created, what they look like, every bit of their life. You know things about your me's before they ever do. You, in turn, are stalking them by peeking in on their apartments, watching them at the beach or park, listening to them talk in the cafes, more than just taking care of them. You're pretty much watching their every move. You're doing more than just taking care of them. You're pretty much watching their every move. Nice, nice job, Stalker. I'm kidding. Some dreams are pre-apocalyptic memories of islanders. Some dreams are said to take place in a time before an apocalypse, an event involving destruction or damage or on a catastrophic scale, pretty much destroying the world. The dream where you see yourself staring into your Mies window, meaning giants are there or like humans are actually there in the Mie world and they shouldn't be. You're literally scaring your Mies to death. Or the dream where a huge Mies come out of the sea. Giant giant sea creatures, very, very odd. Mermaids, who knows? Or the dream where there's a need for a superhero to uh, help save the world from a silly oversized item. All of these things which could have destroyed the previous Tomodachi life worlds that once existed. A crazy thought indeed. Whew, that was a lot. It was definitely a lot of research and I hope that I got most of these right. If not, feel free to correct me down below. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my breakdown of the Tomodachi life iceberg. I wanted to put my own personal opinion and theories on some of these as well to help break them down in a more simple way. I hope it helped explain them all. Leave a comment down below if you have something that you think would go really well on the Tomodachi Life Iceberg. I would love to read it. I hope you all are doing well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not. So that's it for this video. I will see you all in my next video. Until next time, bye-bye. Smooch. <laughs>
if no, uh, if no, <laughs> as some of you may have noticed, there is a Brandon ta 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 who runs the tweet. <laughs> The Twain Station. When you decide to delete your save file, your mirror, your mirror. <laughs> the bloopers are gonna be great. When you decide to delete your save file, your meme will be. <laughs> A lot of greasy, uh, greasy pastas. <laughs> Some dreams are pe pe pain. 